this episode of Finnogrid Machining we are going to build a microscope for metal working. Well, not the entire microscope, it would be, uh, yeah, but uh, let's see, it's uh, there, uh, there, on my bench, and uh, let's see what I have already. Uh, well, there is some Chinese stuff which I'm going to use. So, uh, let's go to the electrical workbench. So, here is uh, some parts uh, of the microscope. Uh, well, first of all, we have a display unit here and uh, an uh, AC adapter. Then we have uh, the microscope itself, it's like that. And well, then we have a video signal going with this yellow adapter here to the side of the display, and then we have a power, separate power uh, for the microscope itself. Hmm. Well, I have uh, there was a light adjustment, and I took it apart a little bit here, like that, and found out that it's just a simple uh, potentiometer. Here inside, I need to measure that one and see what it is, what it really is. Uh, well, obviously, this uh, length of uh, wire is not enough, not even near enough. It should be at least, uh, well, uh, at least half a meter. But that's not a problem. I can always extend it because uh, this is no special wire. It's uh, just what it is. Uh, well, let's try it out. I will now connect uh, 12 volts uh, for the display. Let's see if we can see it. Well, we can see it. And then 5 volts for this. Uh, well, this is a little bit more difficult. Uh, hopefully I can I can use that one. Oh yeah. Okay, we have something here. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Okay, this one has quite a large adjustment range, so you can actually do it like this. Uh, I will put now you, well, you can see here what I, I can see, I believe. So you can look into those components like that those little ones, but when you adjust the tip focus, you can actually go pretty near. Pretty near like that one. That's uh, now the component there. Uh, this starts to be uh, usable, and uh, then we have the uh, range. Uh, the distance uh, is about two centimeters from the from the tip of this thing. Okay, that's actually quite good. It's uh, something uh, I would... Uh, it's usable. And then... Okay, uh, the thing with this one is also that it has a very delicate lens on the tip. And it also has these lights. When I light it up... Uh, uh, now you probably can see there is a light. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether this is usable. Okay, anyway, in, in a metal working, in a lathe or in a milling machine, this must be uh, uh, protected somehow. And it's not enough to keep a distance uh, for the workpiece because the lens here is uh, very small, it's about one millimeter in diameter. And <laughs> Uh, if a small drop of oil goes there, it's basically ruined. So therefore, I have uh, one of these. I will show you. Uh, well, actually, I would like to show you the microscope also. Let's plug it off and uh, see how this one looks. If you can see it. Uh, it's really, really, really small, as you can see. 
this one uh, must be protected somehow. And uh, as it happens, I have uh, this thing. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lens, uh, but uh, the focal length is uh, not very uh, short, so I can use this. Uh, this is beveled here, uh, as uh, same way as is uh, your wristwatch uh, uh, crystal. This is beveled in the same way, and uh, it's aluminium tube and glass. So what you can do, you can wipe it off like this, uh, if it comes dirty, and uh, you are good to go. Okay, uh, so if I put the, the microscope inside here, uh, then I should be able to, uh, well, yeah, uh, use it uh, near the lathe uh, without the danger of uh, destroying it with a drop of oil. Uh, then uh, there are some things here. First of all, uh, the microscope is working uh, on 5 volts. <coughs> okay, uh, not a problem. The display is working on uh, 12 volts. Uh -huh. Not the same voltage. Mm. A little bit uh, challenge there. Well, well uh, we can use one of these guys. These are uh, 5 volt regulators. Okay, I also need to find out how much current does this uh, this thing draw because I noticed that it's uh, it's uh, getting a little bit warm when when used a little bit longer time, so it might uh, uh, consume some power. Okay, uh, well, <coughs> then we have this uh, focal length adjustment here. Uh, this focus. And this one I would like to, I would like to cover the, everything inside, inside uh, some quite robust uh, tube. So there needs to be some system how I, how I turn it. So this should be sitting like this inside there. And then you should be able, still able to adjust the focal length and... Well, this is designed in a way that uh, this uh, wire uh, goes inside there, and it's uh, like, uh, well, it's turning, uh, turning, uh, turning uh, around, and you, you, uh, I don't know how to, how to make this happen in a way that, uh, well, let's see, I have to figure out uh, how, how I can make this, but it uh, has an adjustment range about, well, 10 millimeters. So, I need to do something for that one. Maybe, I don't know how, how to do this, but uh, I need to do that. Uh, and uh, I really cannot leave it like this. Uh, so, uh, this end is also vulnerable or near the late, so it needs to be somehow uh, protected. Well, there is some uh, doing, and furthermore, this one needs our attention. Uh, this is the display unit, uh, it's also already having my fingerprints there. Uh, the back side is what it is. Uh, well, this, this is not heavy. Uh, there is a uh, attaching system here, back side, but I would like this to be a complete unit that there is the microscope sitting on the side so you can just there is some clip which you put it in and then you just take it out uh, set the power on and uh, see what you want to see and then put it back and power it off uh, well that's one and uh, it should be a complete unit with all the uh, voltage regulators etc and the power cord, I already found out a very good power cord for this one. This is, a, well, I will modify it. this one. This is, a, this is the power unit. Uh, well, it still has some power there. Uh, I will uh, dismantle it and put this one instead of this, uh, uh, well, I also have some 12 volt uh, supplies. This is, uh, 
quite light, so maybe let's see what I can find. But this one is very good cord, which is which is uh, silicone. All everything is silicone here, and this one tolerates uh, tolerates some uh, uh, nasty stuff actually. So this one can be used as a power cord, and then I have uh, well. I don't know, but let's see. I will show that one to, for you too. Uh, I have planned to use this one as uh, the cord for the microscope. And this one has a steel uh, braiding on top of it. Uh, well, it's a fuel fuel hose, and uh, well, unused and. Uh, Probably makes uh, the only thing is that it's uh, you cannot rotate it at all. Well, I don't know whether that's a bad or, or a good thing, but it's a suitable length anyway. So it's not too short and not too long. Uh, so this is the suitable length uh, for for the microscope uh, wire. So uh, there is some things to do. Let's uh, start with. Uh, uh, Planning how to house make this, and then uh, after there should be a part which is uh, using to adjust that and uh, whatever there is. But I have decided to use this one because it has this uh, this uh, uh, glass lens which is uh, really good and it uh, really protects uh, the delicate uh, microscope itself. Now. Uh, well, the first thing uh, for this project is to cut the end, uh, the lens away from this one. Uh, uh, I will not use the whole tube, just the tip. Uh, and uh, well, I have already centered it. And uh, uh, when you put it into the chuck, you have to be very careful not to squeeze it too much. Um, actually, I found out that this is not at all round. <laughs> Well, uh, it's uh, and then I used some uh, some uh, emery to get rid of the uh, eloxation. The uh, so because this is going to be glued uh, into a steel piece. And now uh, I have also uh, made uh, this so that this is now ten millimeters. It will be total length ten millimeters. And this will be a parting process, which is really, if this fails, so then uh, I will uh, need to think another approach for this one. <coughs> okay, so, <laughs> let's see, if this chatters, it uh, might do that. No, it doesn't, very good. So let's take baby cuts a little faster, I believe. Well, it's aluminium, so therefore it's really... Oh, now it looks like it, uh, it's going to drop at any second. Hopefully I can catch it. It should actually. Please drop off. Okay, now I can hear it. Yoo Catched it. Yeah. Well, and uh, nice. Well, successfully removed, and uh, well, uh, I want to handle this as little as possible. So, no, no deboring because it's going to be glued inside the, inside the piece of metal. 
maybe a little bit boring, but uh, no. Well, let's see. Okay, so that that's uh, part number one, and it's uh, really good that I succeeded with this one. So. Whew. The next piece of thing will be, I will be producing uh, that one. It's uh, from uh, 25mm stock. There is uh, M20 fine thread on that side. And then there is this recess uh, for the aluminium the lens system. Well, nothing special about that. Uh, there is, uh, there are no critical well, there is one critical uh, distance, it's from this back side, well, the length actually, uh, from this surface to there, it should be quite exactly 20 millimeters. Hmm. Uh, nothing more to that. Oh yeah, uh, I will be doing uh, uh, single point threading here, <laughs> inside. And then we need... Oh, well, the total length is uh, 30 millimeters, uh, so we need uh, 35. The 5 millimeters is uh, for parting. And 35 is around here. Yeah, high, still high this one. It's also high. That's low. And, uh, for some reason I was not able to... There you are. And it should be really tight, so let's uh, see. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Okay, that's enough. Because we are going to have a hole in there. This goes really easily there. Well, it's not too warm, you can measure it. Let's see if this fits now in. Next. This one should. Okay, let's see how much do we have in the reality. Well, it's actually 17.5. Okay. You need to have the chips away to be able to measure it. Okay. Now it should be something. Well, it is 18 millimeters and uh, 500. Let's measure it one more time. So we have one millimeter to go. Ah. Yeah. 
18 millimeters 500 and now okay let's see oh yeah now the larger one fits there Well, this is uh, actually 300 of a millimeter undersize. That's okay. Well, uh, stumbled into a little bit of a problem uh, while trying to change the gears. Hmm. Well, uh, okay, I need to part that uh, thing off first. Uh, I'm doing an internal uh, thread uh, for this uh, this thing, and it is, should be compatible with uh, that one. Okay, and uh, it's actually M20 uh, fine. Well, uh, I'm doing this uh, uh, on the back side uh, of uh, and uh, of the hole, and uh, running it uh, uh, the machine uh, uh, reverse. So, first thing, uh, and yes, this tool is something I, it's a shop made tool, uh, well, a quick hack <laughs> to say, and yes, uh, let's uh, see how this does. Uh, the first thing to do is to, I have a, a already the compound in 30 degree angle, about a little bit under, and then I have a, do I have it? Really? Yeah. And uh, then uh, I also have uh, have uh, 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 set up the straightness of this one so it's straight. And uh, the hole is 19 millimeters at the moment. So uh, first this uh, thing is to touch. And now remember, run this backwards. Let's start there. There you are, it's touching. And now uh, uh, I zero my dial here. And then, uh, well, I retract it and then I have uh, carriage stop adjusted where the thread should start like that. Uh, there is no uh, thread relief uh, in the backside. So, uh, well, maybe some oil, cutting oil there. Uh, let's put some cutting oil. Uh, sorry, you don't see this. <laughs> but I'm just putting cutting oil here. Yeah. And then let's go back to the stop. And then, uh, oh, you have to remember the direction. Then uh, the zero. And then I, uh, is this the zero? Really? Yes, it is. And uh, then we take, now, since there is no thread relief, uh, I need to rotate it while uh, dialing the compound, uh, increasing it. You can hear, there is a little bit of sound there. Okay, and now, uh, this is probably just my lathe, but you cannot uh, engage uh, the half nuts while it's running uh, backwards. It's, uh, it's really, you have to do this, uh, rotate it, now it's engaged. And then you just run your first uh, thread. And yes, you have all the time in the world <laughs> to do. Uh, if I would run this uh, the other way around, 
it would be really, really bad because then, yeah, you have to fish the chips <laughs> because uh, the chips will uh, interfere with your thing. And then uh, retract uh, that one, go back to your stop, and now while running, put the dial again back to zero here. Uh, Let's take a little bit deeper cut, like that, and now I really cannot uh, engage the... Okay, now it went uh, quite easily. Let's Sometimes there you are. Uh, so let's go. Engaged. Let's go. Be ready already. <laughs> Let's see how it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. So now, yeah. Successfully traded. And now, what I will do next, uh, and this is something uh, I disengage all the uh, threading things, but what I will do, I will uh, now remove the bull with this tool. Uh, it's in zero, that one into back to zero, and then I just wipe, put a little bit more speed here. This should now wipe all the... A little bit more there. Yeah. I will wipe off the tops of the threads with this one. should take care of the board. And it did. Well, yeah, that's the way I do this and uh, this way I don't crash my lathe. <coughs> so, here are some of the components for this uh, microscope. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, this is uh, the actual uh, microscope. And uh, uh, it will go, of course, all these components are thoroughly cleaned uh, because once I put it together, uh, I really cannot, uh, yeah, and it uh, fits there pretty tight. Okay, it's now there. And then uh, this is, I have put some paper here just to keep... Uh, dirt out from it. And then this screws in here. 
like that. Oh. Is it... Uh, looks like it's pretty far away. It should be near. Oh yeah, now it is. Oh yeah, now. Yeah, it should be quite near the surface uh, of the lens. Okay, next thing is uh, for me to test this uh, before I cut this. So I can see whether the lens is now it, whether it has the correct distance. If not, I have to shorten this one uh, a little bit. And uh, yeah, so I will test it now. So after testing it, it uh, it's uh, perfect actually. And uh, <clears throat> well, because this is glass, you can now wipe it uh, clean like that. <coughs> and uh, yeah, uh, that's very good. And then. Uh, how this goes together? Uh, well, uh, this is one part of that, and then we have uh, uh, the rest. And uh, this is to accommodate because I have need to make a longer thread here. So it will actually go. I will uh, cut it uh, and peel it uh, uh, from here. And then I have some very good quality uh, um, wires which I can use here. And then, um, well, uh, this one goes together like that. Uh, I decided to use this uh, gas, 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 wire, uh, tube. Uh, it's uh, about the correct length here. Uh, yeah, and uh, then uh, maybe I need to straighten it. It uh, wants to go <laughs> in a certain uh, geometry. But uh, anyway, this is a perfect fit for this. So it goes in like that. And then you just put it uh, into, into here. Like that. Well, it, when it now goes into there. Uh, yeah. Like that. And then when you tighten it, stays there really well. Yeah. And uh, after that when you you have tightened it, uh, it will, uh, uh, well it will be, uh, let's see how it looks like when it's uh, <coughs> all together. This goes into here. Like that. And then uh, the wire goes into the tube, and like that, and that. Then you have your, uh, well it's uh, a little bit more bulky, but uh, uh, the focus at the moment, you can adjust it, it's, it's about here. So, uh, well, uh, it's uh, very good. I could also make it a little bit longer so I can look inside uh, threads or inside the uh, bore to see how it looks like in there. Uh, well, uh, let's see how that is. But now when it's uh, encased, the microscope like that, well, it tolerates a little bit more the, uh, uh, the environment uh, in uh, metal working. So, Next step here will be to put the wires in the, into there and then next uh, is to uh, make a stand for the display. Uh, well, let's see what I can do with that one. So, uh, oh, uh, hmm. this is uh, where we are now with our uh, Microscope. <laughs> uh, well, uh, this is the, uh, the lens cover thing uh, here. That's an extension to house uh, the middle of the microscope and uh, the rest is for holding the wires and uh, 
whatever there is. And then we have uh, this uh, thing that uh, keeps uh, this uh, gas tube. <laughs> no, this is not gas powered. It's a normal electrical camera actually, but uh, uh, this one will never ever come out by itself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then uh, this is how the lens looks at the moment. It's like that. And it's uh, very well uh, covered now. This uh, here it's a glass, so you can wipe it clean and it doesn't mind oil or anything. It's, uh, it's really, well, you can uh, use your saliva to clean it, for example, or towels, etc. And uh, it doesn't uh, scratch uh, easily. It will scratch, but not easily. Okay, then we have the wires inside this tube and uh, here are the end of the wires. There are some uh, video signals plus ground and then the backlight. There is a light uh, in this uh, microscope. So when you put the resistor here, you can control the amount of light. I have that resistor somewhere, maybe. But it doesn't need it actually, so maybe I don't use it. Okay, well, but all this, uh, this uh, needs a power supply and so does uh, the, uh, the uh, display also. So, well, uh, for that uh, I have now, let's put this aside a little while. So, this thing is the original uh, power supply that came uh, with this uh, microscope. And uh, now I will show you, let's zoom in so that you can see it. So I will show you some things about this. This is uh, a switching power supply. And uh, those uh, gray wires, th those are the, the, uh, the uh, power inlet uh, connected uh, to 220 volts with this. And if we go on, and uh, you probably can see that there are some empty places here. Uh, uh, let me put it uh, down there so, so that we both can... Uh, uh, that's probably the best place. Not the best, but uh, a good place. So, uh, let's see what's here. Uh, first of all, the, that one, that picture here, uh, should be a fuse. Huh. But there is no component. You should uh, input your, your uh, 220 volts AC here. Then you should have a, a fuse and an RT meaning uh, uh, temperature dependent resistor. Uh, probably negative temperature uh, coefficient, NTC resistor. Uh, this is uh, to, um, uh, to medicate the strong inrush current of the device when you first connect it on. But none of those components are present here. Uh, and uh, then uh, this glass tube here, this is actually a fuse. <laughs> but uh, it's not in place of a fuse, it should be sitting here. But uh, instead it is sitting here. And here we should have a, a coil, which uh, should actually uh, uh, be filtering things. And uh, the filtering is for not for uh, for the uh, the uh, converter itself, but to filter out uh, um, stuff that it uh, shouldn't uh, go back to the mains, to the power grid, so that this shouldn't transmit. Uh, um, uh, disturbances to power grid. So that's the purpose. Uh, if we would have that kind of uh, uh, inductor here, that would be that. Okay, then we have all the... Uh, this is the rectifier. This is the peak capacitor that is uh, storing the energy from uh, the power grid. Then we have uh, some components here, like uh, this is this green thing here. It's a capacitor which is uh, probably uh, determining the operational frequency of this, uh, uh, this uh, flyback converter. Then we have some uh, these three components here, this diode, uh, this resistor and the blue capacitor here. 
those three are called the flyback uh, to accommodate the flyback pulses to smoothen out them a little bit so that uh, it's easier for the output to handle this. Okay. And now, and if we look uh, in the back side, so we can see that uh, there is no power fed here. Oh yes, there is actually. <laughs> it's inside this integrated circuit. This one has everything. It has uh, the 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 current uh, flyback uh, um, uh, controller, and it also has the um, the power output fed inside. And here you can see it's connected with these eight pins here, uh, and uh, these uh, the output fed is cooled down with this uh, bit of uh, uh, circuit board, the copper layer here. Well, uh, what is evident here is the uh, here is a barrier. This is the. This side here is the is the power grid side, and this here is the low voltage uh, side for your equipment. Actually, this um, supply is 12 volts and uh, uh, 2.2 uh, 2 amper amps. And well, <coughs> okay. So uh, here under uh, this is a transformer, a flyback transformer, uh, nothing more. Then we have here an opto isolator. Uh, it uh, will uh, control uh, uh, the the flyback thing uh, in this side, and then we have a resistor and a Zener diode. The original plan was to have a lot uh, more complex uh, circuitry for that one. Ah, uh, and then we have something that <coughs> is not very nice idea. Uh, we have here a capacitor, this blue one. It is connected between your low voltage and your high voltage side. If this capacitor sorts, you have a lethal de device on your hands. And, uh, well, maybe it sorts, maybe not. Then we have a Schottky diode here. Uh, there are some reasons why they uh, tend to, in this uh, type of uh, switching power supplies, they like to use Schottky diodes. Uh, there are several reasons. They are fast and they do have a very low uh, voltage drop uh, uh, across them. And then for filtering, we only have these two electrolytic capacitors. And, uh, well, a uh, very flimsy coil here. Just a ferret bed and a wire. Then there is a LED uh, for indication and it's a limiting, current limiting resistor. This is just to show that, hey, this device is on. That's it. So, what we are missing here. First of all, the INRAS uh, current uh, uh, medication. Nothing there. Then filtering for... Uh, um, for uh, um, we, we are missing filtering for uh, outgoing to, towards the, the power grid. So this will uh, feed uh, all the disturbances into the power grid and, uh, well, yeah. Then we have no filtering, uh, none whatsoever, for uh, any, any radio, uh, radio frequencies here. It's total, uh, totally uh, <coughs> like uh, void from, uh, of these components. Well. Uh, I don't trust, uh, I, I believe, uh, I don't use this one. There are, uh, well, I'm a radio amateur. And uh, uh, that's uh, one of my <coughs> many hobbies. Uh, so yes, uh, I don't like this type of uh, flyback converters. These are really crappy. Well, <coughs> I have here, a, uh, let's zoom out. Now you have seen uh, the construction of this device. You remember this radio I uh, tuned a while ago? Let's put it on. Maybe we find something here. Okay. Then uh, let's connect. Uh, let's put this on. I have here uh, two wires. 
I will now, I have an isolation transformer here at the side. You can hear when I when I put it there, and these now contain uh, 220 volts, so I have to be a little bit careful here. Let's see what happens. What do you think? Wow! <laughs> it's uh, amazing. Yes. <laughs> well. Let's try it again. <laughs> this was actually quite funny. Oh yeah. So, this is... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what this is. This is a radio frequency generator. Uh, for me, uh, there is only one place for these kind of devices. Well, I have it here. It's the beam. There you go. So, uh, we need a 12 volt uh, power supply. Here is my alternative. This is a Japanese... Uh, uh, switching power supply as well as that one was. Oh, let's take it for a while uh, from the beam so that we can. We don't need that for a while. We try this one also with the radio, so, you, so we can compare. So, uh, what's the difference between these two? Sorry, I glued this on. I checked it and put some magnets into it so that I can attach it uh, to the lathe. This is a Japanese made uh, power supply, uh, I think it's uh, Sony or then it's uh, Sony. I don't know which one, but this one is properly made. Uh, the output voltage is very stable. It's 12.20 uh, something volts, independent of the load, how much load you put there. This one drops uh, down to something like... Uh, uh, very rapidly to 11 volts and then it uh, vanishes altogether uh, near 2 amps. Okay. And then uh, we have also uh, very good filtering for the output. Uh, this, uh, the, the current you are getting, the choice you are getting out from these two wires is clean. This one had a lot of ripple. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot of ripple. This one didn't. This was uh, totally silent. Okay, now let's uh, try it out. So I will put now here this. Uh, it will disturb, I promise, but how much? Yes. There is something, but it doesn't produce a carrier like that one. This is a horrible thing. This uh, oh, we still have a bit, uh, 220 volts here, <laughs> so we can. Uh, yeah. You can still listen to your radio while this uh, this one is on, but with this on, <laughs> no way. So, and uh, I also measured the bandwidth. Uh, the, the this one uh, is emitting uh, radiation uh, all over the place. It's uh, starting from nine kilohertz and ending up to something like uh, three gigahertz, and it's uh, well, it's trash. Uh, this one is uh, quite good. It's uh, quite silent. Uh, you really, uh, by the way, this radio is really quite sensitive. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is going to be my power supply. And it's uh, really nice. It's uh, robust. And it's uh, robustly, the electronics are also very robust. 
So yeah, very good. Well, uh, this was uh, all about the microscope uh, this time. In the next episode, we'll uh, we'll we will finish uh, this uh, microscope. Until then, see you.